Rock Eyes would like to welcome Joe. Tell me a little bit about Varga. Uh, well, Varga is a band that's been around since uh, 1989. And uh, back when we started, we were uh, pretty, pretty thrash metal, uh, progressive thrash metal. And... Um, and then in the 90s, we, uh, we, we got a record deal with uh, BMG and uh, did two records with, uh, with BMG. And uh, they were a little more straight ahead, uh, heavy metal, um, more groove oriented with a little bit of industrial mixed in, in, into the mix. We kind of changed their style a little bit. And then uh, after those two albums kind of did their thing about 97 we kind of faded away for a while and uh and then uh, around 2010 jump ahead right. that's when we kind of uh got back together and started uh playing some gigs uh we we kind of started off uh innocently playing some metal gigs uh, and doing uh not our our own stuff but uh we we we've done we were doing these things called classic metal night in our hometown where we would uh cover a full uh classic metal album like Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast, Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance, you know, Black Sabbath, uh any Black Sabbath record we we love Sabbath. So right. so it was it was one of those things where we just started uh doing full albums and uh from there I was just kind of saying, "Come on, guys, why don't we uh, get back at it and start, uh, you know, recording, uh, you know, writing some stuff?" But uh, you know, um, and that's that's basically how it, how it all came to be once right. again. Right. Yeah. Well, in '91, you had uh, multiple orgasms, and um, that came out on a cassette. Do you miss that that them uh, days? You know, when you get to put out your little cassette and like a demo, oh, yeah, and, and you know, compared to these days, you know, everything's like multiplied uh, by thousands and stuff. But well, I mean, I, I really don't miss the cassette format as much. Right. But, <laughs> but it was it was a fun time back then, and and funny enough, most of the songs on uh, these these uh, two releases we got coming up here like we have the one that's out now uh, uh varga enter the metal right which is uh six songs and then there's another one coming out in may called varga return of the metal which is another six songs that have already been recorded as well right and basically all the 12 songs all together were all stuff that was reworked from uh, our original thrash progressive days back from 89 to 91 era right so uh so that's where we're at right now. Right, and, right. Uh, yeah, I listened yeah. to him this morning. Um I, I really liked uh, Shark Attack. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, I, I thought that was that was pretty cool. It had like a little King Diamond flair in the beginning and you know, it Right, uh, right. You know, it you know, it, I mean definitely listening to it, uh, I I could feel, you know, the old vibe of, of music that I used to listen to back in the day, you know. And, well, yeah, uh, man. Well, same with us. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're playing now, which was basically our old stuff, reworked was was heavily influenced by uh, bands like uh, Merciful Fate and King Diamond and and uh, old school stuff you know like uh, Metallica obviously and Megadeth and uh, Slayer and Priest and Maiden and it, it, we, we kind of just pick, picked all our favorite bands and kind of mushed it into one one thing and that's what came out a lot of progressive stuff too like uh, obviously we were heavily influenced by uh, you know old school Rush with the 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 progressive element of things. Right, right. So, and you you got to open up from Talca, right? Yeah, yeah. Funny enough, that was uh, kind of a blessing in disguise. We uh, they did a show in Toronto many years ago, and uh, it was for a thing called Molson Canadian Blind Date. I'm not <laughs> sure if you're familiar with right. that, but basically the premise of, of that was uh, you get this ticket in in your, your case of beer, oh, wow. and. Uh, and then you would go to a venue, and you weren't, you, you didn't know who was who was playing, but right. you would go, and you know that it was be somebody famous, and it just happened to be Metallica. And then we got the call to to be the openers wow. from from their record company because at the time, I think right before we did that gig, they had a, a box set coming out of some sort, right. and uh, they were on tour at the time. But they needed a band in Toronto to to do a, a an opening. Uh, so, sort of like a uh, promotion for them. Right. So 
so we were the, we we were known to you know do do a bunch of Metallica covers. So basically, in a nutshell, we did a favor for them by basically playing at a record store at 12 midnight in Toronto and uh, playing a bunch of Metallica covers, cool. pushing their product. <laughs> And in turn, they they did us a favor by letting us uh, open up for them, which was phenomenal. Wow. It was great. Wow. It was great to meet the guys, and they they basically stand stood side stage for our set and watched our show, which was amazing. Yeah. Is it is it nice getting to you know be up on that stage and and looking out and seeing all yeah, these people man. that uh, you know actually singing your song and uh, you know um, just having a good time? What's that feeling like? It's wicked, man. It's wicked. It's a great vibe when when you know people are enjoying what you're what you're writing, and you know it's it's a great feeling, man. Wow, no doubt. Do you do you feel like like you know back in the day again? I mean, you had Overkill, Anthrax, Testament, all these bands and stuff. Right. Do you think that'll ever really come back around? How, how big those bands were playing, like Monsters of Rock tour and stuff like that. I mean, newer right. bands like like you guys. Well, you're not newer, but I mean, you know, like bands reaching that status that that are not known now. You think that'll ever happen again? I I I think so. I mean, it. it I I would say uh, metal right now is pretty much exploding around the world, especially in Europe, and and there's all these like festivals and stuff with tons of tons of bands and and it's slowly like creeping into the states and canada it, it, where, where more big metal festivals are, are coming coming around so and, and and those bands you mentioned like testament and death angel and all those old school metal bands are still still doing it and doing it well wow. and anthrax man their last their last record man worship music right that was an awesome record man it was one of their best records in my opinion so yeah well, what's the feeling like when someone comes up to you and uh, you know asks for an autograph? <laughs> well, it's it, it, obviously it's 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 a it's a great feeling, but at the same time, you know, we're not uh, egomaniacs or anything, so you know it, it's cool just that uh, you know people uh, want want our autograph and uh, you know will you know sign their T-shirt or CD or whatever. It's it's great that they appreciate what we do. It's wow. awesome. Do yeah. you do you miss the vinyl days at all? Yeah, of course. And uh, funny you mention that, because uh, we do plan on um, doing a double vinyl, uh, probably in the fall. Wow. Uh, and it's, and it's going to be basically the one that's released now, Enter the Metal, and uh, the one that's coming out in May, uh, Return of the Metal. It'll be a double vinyl with both... Uh, both uh, albums in one vinyl package. I, I see a lot of bands g doing that as a, like a specialty oddity type thing, and uh, is yeah. there a reason why now, all of a sudden? Well, I think more so that it's like a collector's item, but right. but I still have friends that, that still play vinyl. Right. And if you go to any record store, or, or what do you, whatever you want to call it, CD store, music store, right. uh, I'm starting to see uh, the shelves, uh, there's, you know, there's a there's a chain in Canada called HMV, and they are like stocking lots of vinyl, and it's a lot of reproductions of older albums. I'm thinking, wow, it's it's slowly creeping back. Wow. Yeah, so that that's great because vinyl vinyl's cool and it sounds different. Uh, that there's always been that, you know, that dispute that vinyl sounds thicker and crispier than CDs or whatever. It, but it def definitely has a good vibe. For sure, and it's big, and you can see the artwork bigger, and you know, definitely, definitely. lyrics and all that stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you, Do you feel that that you reached the goal that you wanted in Varga, um, that you were hoping for? Uh, well, currently, um, you know, we're just basically rebuilding. Um, the thing from from scratch, you know, we're we're not on a record label right now. We're basically doing it all by ourselves this time. We're, you know, we've got uh, one of our guitar players, Sean. He's uh, basically the webmaster. Right. He he takes care of the website, and myself, I, I do more of the graphics thing. Uh, I've done I've done most of the uh, the artwork for for the two albums, and then uh, you know I'll help Sean out with the uh, graphics of the the website as well and stuff like that. So everybody's kind of working it themselves. Our drummer, he's he's kind of like the uh, the blogger right. guy, Facebook and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean it's a, definitely a different. Uh, 
situation now, but um, back in the 90s, I mean, we had some success with the two CDs that we had on a re- record label, right. and, uh, you know, we, we, we got some good good things out of that, and, uh, you know, it was a good le- learning experience, but again, you know, the 90s were a strange time for metal, because right. it, was, it was that weird, you know, crossover thing, and then, and then you know, the whole grunge came, came through, and uh, kind of... Uh, freak things out for a while for metal right so so, so don't you feel like like it's a, a better time for for a band now actually you know to be out there because you really have more control over w- w- your destiny actually with with the internet um you know self-marketing and stuff well, like yeah, that well yeah yeah definitely i think it's uh it's more uh, on the band to to run the business now than record companies. Record companies are basically, in my opinion, just there now to distribute your record. Right. And even that, we can we're, we're kind of doing ourselves as well. But I mean, it, it, that doesn't mean to say that if that we're not going to shop shop around our stuff and and haven't been. Right. Uh, um, and if you know some rec- big record company wants to give us a, a load of money for a <laughs> tour or whatever, by all means, bring it on. That's good. And, you know what I mean, but uh, it's definitely a different uh, world for uh, bands these days, and uh, I find more bands are just doing it themselves. Number one, to 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 make more money, right? In, in essence, instead of owing the record company hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, it's it, it's it's like a business, definitely, but a fun one. Definitely. Music, man. Yeah. Right, right. Are you writing yeah. new material now? Yeah, yeah, we're we're batting around some ideas. We probably won't get to that till uh, till the fall, right? And probably going into Christmas because, like I said, the second half hasn't even come out yet, and it won't be out till May first. Right. So, and then uh, after that, we want to get out there and uh, do some touring, hopefully in across Canada and the states, and in Europe as well. A- ain't that a uh, pretty tough to do? Um, you know, being I guess self financed and stuff like that. Is it- touring, I guess, sleeping in cars or whatever you have to do, is, is that really a hassle or you enjoy it? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a hassle, but I mean, it's all it's all in who you know and stuff. And right. uh, we have some connections from our past and um, we have management as well. So they're, they're kind of working for us, trying to uh, hook us up with some half decent gigs cool. that we're not, you know, driving nine hours to, to make, you know, 50 bucks each. Right in, a, in some small little town, you know, we're we're actually trying to get on some some bigger festivals and stuff cool. like that for the summer. <laughs> so uh, you know, hopefully they come through. Cool, cool. Well, Joe, yeah. congratulations on the na- the album and uh, another one coming any any time now. And some yeah. new material at the during the year, you know, uh, congratulations on your career and uh, you know, I wish you the best. Thanks, brother, and uh, thanks for having me uh, on your uh, website. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> Would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just look out for the name Varga, and uh, we're hopefully get get over into the states this summer, and uh, come check us out. It's it's heavy, it's progressive thrash, and it's uh, in your face, and it'll rip your head off. <laughs> cool, cool. Thanks very much, Joe. Thanks, Brian. Bye bye. Bye bye.